the bills by the professionals. Summary of the show. Buffalo Bills is a restaurant in downtown St. Petersburg. It is run by Mr. Pinkerton. Mr. Pinkerton was there from the start when the business first initially opened. He runs the business very well with the amount of gain profit that shows monthly. Buffalo Bills has had an increase in their turnover rate due to the waitresses being harassed by James and forced to do things that do not fall in their job description. When the waitress refuses to do things outside of their job role, they are quickly let go from the company. When this is brought to James' attention, he then points fingers to blame everyone else but himself. Three remaining employees, Jenny Bush, Laura, and Jimmy, decide that enough is enough and band together to take down Mr. Pinkerton once and for all. Little do they know Jimmy will end up being crazy on a level they could never have expected. He not only wants to take down James, he wants to kill him. Laura and Jenny must team up and, force, and form the perfect plan to take down Mr. Pinkerton and make sure that Jimmy isn't able to hurt James or even worse, them. Where did our inspiration come from? When developing our story, we wanted to make sure that we are able to tie in our management concepts. The best way to do this, in our opinion, was to develop a story that had a systematic takedown in it. Having this story that revolves around a plan gives us the opportunity to tie concepts of planning, controlling, and execution that are so important in the life of management. Being able to tie these concepts into a story into a story that had a murder thriller feel to it really makes for an interesting way for viewers to not only enjoy themselves but to learn at the same time. The plot. Our plot revolves around the takedown of Mr. Pinkerton. Our rising actions in our plot start with the point at which Jenny, Laura, and Jimmy all meet for the first time. They then find that they have a common goal. It is to make sure that James can't be a terrible manager to them anymore. After, the, after they develop a plan, we reach our climax, which is where the plan is put into place. This plan results in the firing of James and the arrest of Jimmy, which will be our falling actions. The conclusion of our story is the promotion of Jenny and Laura who both co-manage the store, making for a more effective way of managing a managing team. Who's watching? Our target audience. Our target audience, our target market is anyone from the ages of 17 to 45 who enjoys suspense, thriller, styles of television. Our target market will be people who are in the workforce and the business-minded viewers will pick up on our management concepts as they are presented. Our target audience is anyone who would like to enjoy a television show that also teaches them skills and gives them the knowledge that may translate into their everyday life. How would we accomplish this? This format of our, telev of our television show will be a mini-series Rather than trying to stretch the show into a four or five season show, we'd like to pack all the action into six episodes in a specialty series. We believe this will hook view this will hook each viewer and keep them coming back for more. The quick pace will resonate the viewers who are sick of the normal series, which has slow parts to stretch the episode out. With success of this format, we may be able to use the viewer's knowledge of the series to create another mini-series that will have a following simply because it is created by the same producer. Let's meet the characters. James Pinkerton, the boss, the head honcho. James is from what we've discussed, a terrible manager that abuses his employees in many ways and causes them to want to get revenge on him. 
James also is someone that is not is not fit for a management role anymore. Laura is cool, calm, and collected. Laura is one of the main characters who are plotting to take down their boss, James. Laura is good at keeping a solid head throughout all of the turbulence in the show. Laura represents organizational structure because she comes up with the plans and divides the labor into different tasks. Let's meet more characters. Jimmy is the crazy dishwasher who Jenny and Laura find themselves in the situation in the first place. It was originally Jimmy's idea that they needed to seek revenge on James. Jimmy convinces, uh, Jimmy represents behavior because he acts insane and tries to get everyone else in his scheme. Jenny is Laura's sidekick who is very anxious and realizes she got herself into a terrible position and she just wants James to go away but not in a hurtful way. Jenny represents a rational person that deals with solutions in the situation and pleads with Laura to find a better situation. And finally, the episodes line up. Episode 1. The show all begins in the office where James is making all of his employees participate in a humiliating game he calls Wild West Games. When an employee refuses to participate because it is degrading, James lets them go from the company. This makes Jenny and Laura very upset and they talk in the break room about it. Jimmy overhears them and says he can help them get revenge on James. This episode represents ethical lapse because of James's unethical behavior. Episode 2. The next episode, Jimmy, Jenny, and Laura are planning their revenge. Jenny and Laura think they should go to a lawyer, but Jimmy wants to hurt James. Jenny and Laura know this is wrong and try to decide how to handle this delicate situation. This episode represents negotiation because Jenny and Laura must figure out a way to keep Jimmy from doing anything crazy. Episode 3. This episode has Jenny and Laura deciding how to solve their, prob their problems with Jimmy and James. They decide that they will record Jimmy coming up with his crazy plan to hurt James and they will still film him confronting James which will show James unethical behavior in the workplace and they will give it all to the police. This episode represents organizational structure because Laura divides the plan into different parts for her and Jenny, even Jenny, even Jimmy without his knowledge to complete this task. Episode 4. This episode shows Jenny and Laura speaking with Jimmy about how they think his plan to kidnap James is a good plan and asking him how he will complete it. Jimmy then explains his entire plan and incriminates himself in the process since Jenny and Laura are recording him. They try to record Jimmy confronting James about his unethical behavior and get James on tape firing Jimmy. Now, all Laura, Jenny have to do is tape it and take it to the police before Jimmy attacks James in the company parking lot. This episode represents the moral rights approach because while Jenny and Laura don't like James, they know it's wrong to let him get hurt by Jimmy so they take action. Episode 5. This episode shows Jenny and Laura going to the police with their tape and the police rushing to the office. 
They find Jimmy hiding behind James's car just in time as James is leaving the office. Jimmy had many incriminating things with him like stun gun, duct tape, and other sorts of weapons. They leave James alone since Jenny and Laura will have to file a lawsuit to get James fired. This episode represents tactical plans because Jenny and Laura made a narrowly scoped plan and execute it precisely. Episode 6. This episode shows Jenny and Laura bringing their lawsuits against James and them working in a stable environment once again. They win their case against James and are awarded quite a large sum of money along with the rest of the workers that James abused. Jimmy is also shown being taken to prison for his crimes. The episode ends with Jimmy breaking out of prison looking at the list of people to get revenge on. The list says James, Laura, and Jenny. This leaves the show open for another season. The final episode represents punishment since James and Jimmy are punished in this episode for their immoral and unethical behavior. How will we accomplish this? Our group, the professionals, take pride on working together in an efficient and timely manner. For the remainder of the course, we'll continue what we've been doing, which has been successful. Our strategy we will use will consist of posting the canvas for what is due of each week, getting together and divide up the workload, ensuring no one will be carrying the weight of the team, bringing our work together to form a professional finished product, and texting has become our primary source of communication and has been working out very well for quicker responses and things of that nature. The general roles. Alex. Alex posts to Canvas and initiates group meetings and communication. He then submits all the work through Canvas and is generally in charge of putting putting together all the pieces of the finished product and he is more of a technical team member since some of us are not as great as he is at this. Christian, the creative mind behind the group, generally in charge of episode development and connecting episodes to management concepts. He does a very great job at doing this. Sarah, the solid contributor, generally in charge of whatever needs to be done, whether it's character outlines, episode development, or voiceover work. And generally is okay with doing anything that works out best for each person. What we've accomplished. As a team, we've managed to complete the first three milestones as well as design challenges that have been presented to us. We've developed characters, episode outlines, as well as made connections to management material. This has been a team effort up to this point. We don't feel it's necessary to distinguish who has done what. We feel as though we're working as a team and all pulling our own weight so that we may present to you the best project that we can.